defensive guys were saying that some of the big plays that were allowed on Saturday were kind of a result of one or two mistakes that led to obviously big opportunities for Michigan. Is that encouraging for you that they seem to be small, correctful mistakes, or is it more frustrating if those mistakes are still happening? Uh, I think I think it's both. You know, obviously it's an encouraging because you watch the film and and you're close. Whether we can or won't do it, same to me. Uh, it's disappointing that it's not getting done yet. So I think it's it's both. A, it's a little bit of both right now. Uh, but things we got to fix. Yeah, kind of throw some things around a little bit. You have to what uh, challenges are David Lau going to bring to you? Well, I think you know first and foremost, he's a guy when you turn the film on. You know, the first, the first ball kind of that I look to see if a guy can make, if he's like a real guy, is that, you know, he can throw that 20-yard out to the field from the opposite hash, and he can throw that thing on the money. Um, so I think he's, a, he's an exceptional passer. Um, he's, a, he's an adequate runner. He can run it a little bit, obviously, maybe, maybe not as well as some of the other guys that are quote-unquote dual threat, but I think he can throw it as good as anybody in the league. So he's gonna, you're really going to have to be great in melting your zones, and you're going to have to be tight in man coverage. Yeah, you know, I thought actually going back to when they were at Western Kentucky, we watched some of their film in, in preparation for the bowl game when we had uh, playing Arkansas State, and I thought that they did a great job um, offensively and defensively there. Um, and I think that's carried over to Purdue. I think, um, you know, everybody in the Big Ten's got a certain deal, right? Michigan, Wisconsin, and, and some of those other teams are going to pound you, and they're really good at that. I think these guys are as good at the, at the spread system as any, anybody in the country. You know, I, I think <laughs> physically, do we have a ways to go? Yeah. You know, we're, we're in year 0.5 or 0.75 of the strength and conditioning program. So to catch up with those teams, do we have a ways to go? Yeah. But I don't feel like it was like David and Goliath or anything like that. I, I thought the guys played hard when they were in the right fits, when they were executing. Uh, you know, we, were, we, were, we, could, we could hold our own. Uh, but we definitely have a ways to go as far as the strength and conditioning, as far as the development of players and that type of thing. Well, obviously, if you're on defense and you don't know where that guy's at, you're, you're a little bit crazy because they're going to find a way to get him the football, um, you know, whether it's fly sweep, whether it's putting him in the backfield and motioning him out or, or screening him out of the backfield, whether he's in the slot or at number one running some difficult patterns. I think we always have to have conscious awareness of where he's going to be at, and I think we have to have a good plan of how you can – I don't know if you can ever just stop him from a game, but how you can limit him to, to what he's going to do. What it, yeah, I think, and, and, and I think Mo, you know, he, he's one of the guys also, he made some, some critical errors in the game, just like everybody else. I think Mo can make up for it a little bit with, with the effort that he plays with, it, with the passion that he plays with, and I think the guys feed off of him a little bit, even, even when we got down in that game and he's still playing hard and he's celebrating and he's having a great time playing football. I think he's a guy that really loves football, and we need... 11 guys that love football out there. We need 22 guys that love football. Eventually, we need 105 guys that just love to play football, period, whether it's out in the rain on a Tuesday or whether it's in the big house or whether it's in Memorial Stadium. doesn't matter. They love football, practice, games, whatever, and I think that's, that's what he does. When you go for that trait, how, how do you sort of identify it? How, how much of an emphasis are you guys putting on that specific trait um, in this class and class two? I think right now that this stage in our program, obviously we got to get some length and speed um, because I really believe that our nutrition, our strength and conditioning can develop guys with length and speed, but also you got to have guys that are great guys that we want in the program and that love football. And I think those are, if it's even close right now, I'm going to take the guy that loves football and is, is a good person. We don't need any more, any more guys that, you know, that are walking the line all the time that we got to hold their hand we don't need guys that maybe love football we don't need those guys that play football but you ask them hey do you watch that nfl game last night or do you watch the you know the whatever oregon stanford game and they're like no nah, i don't really watch football outside I, I don't want those guys anymore i want guys that love football their life revolves around football i want they got to do academics they got to be good in the community but i want guys that love football period For that room, what have you seen from them? What do you want to see from 
uh, once again, they're getting better, but not good enough. There's too many balls in the air right now that need to be ours. Uh, they, they just got to realize that when the ball goes in the air, there's a fist fight every snap. Sometimes it's the old line, D line, right? They're in a fist fight on the line of scrimmage, darn near every snap. For those DBs, you're going to be in the run fit, you know, a handful of times a game. You're in a fist fight then. But when the ball goes in the air, you're in a fist fight with that receiver. There, there's really not a lot of offensive pass interference being called right now, and that's not going to change. So we need to go attack the football. We need to take the football away, and we need to get some more of those balls that are in the air. Eric, you guys have started practice strong in recent weeks, but haven't started the games the way you wanted to. How do you get that, those early week practices and coming out and attacking like that to translate into the game? I think what you said is accurate. We've started practice strong. Um, we've started practice strong every week. We have not ended practice strong every week. Last week, Thursday, to be honest with you, was very below average. Uh, Wednesday was okay. Tuesday was okay. Monday was really good. We need to practice really good on Monday, better on Tuesday, the best on Wednesday, and then completely dialed in on Thursday. And once that happens, I think it'll translate to Saturday. But right now, that has not happened.